So, for those who are regularly parts of GBC, the last time I preached was three weeks ago. Oh, wow, there was no cheer. Are you all right? Wowzers. Um, can anybody remember anything at all? The key, it was two key messages that I was doing for sort of two weeks in a row. Can anyone say, I can always rely upon Lorna, it's great. You could take a leaf out of this member of the church, everyone. I wrote them down. That's fine, I don't care, that's good. Um, mine was make time for God, directed encounters with people, and we are called to be witnesses for Christ. Amen, good. Anybody else? Uh, you weren't here, so you won't, don't worry. It's about what have I preached for two weeks. Don't worry, you weren't here, Finley. Two words. Ah, go. Observe Sabbath and reset. Yep. Observe Sabbath properly and reset. We do not observe Sabbath day. Um, what we do is we, we fill it with doing shopping and DIY and whatever you feel like doing. We, 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 we don't actually rest. We don't enjoy God and his creation. It's not talking about singing worship all, time, all day and Bethel songs. It's about taking time out, maybe spending time with friends, actually being together, but recognising you're doing that. Now, you could do that anywhere, from, from a coffee shop to church to home, yes, even to a restaurant or a wine bar. You are allowed. Um, but it's about enjoying God in each other's company, recognizing that. Sabbath was meant to be a, time, a day to reset, to sort of stop doing anything that you would normally do and honor God by actually resting. As it says in the Bible, Sabbath was made for man, not man for Sabbath. Two words. I'm going to put them. See if you can put them in the right order for me. Sheets, time. Time sheets. Do you remember me talking about doing time sheets? Actually, if you did a time sheet of your week, you'll be quite surprised where you think you are actively busy and where you really aren't. Anybody done a time sheet? No, because you're all looking at me blankly. For those who have not heard it, very, very quickly, the whole point was being was we, we don't, we, it's not, a, it, we should have time, spending time with God and having time for other people. But we have this habit of cramming our diaries full of stuff and not actually thinking about maybe letting God sort of interact in our day, giving space. We can so easily go, right, I've got to do this, I've got to do this, I've got to got to do this and God's going yeah but I'm over here hello I want you to talk to this person not necessarily about me but just spend time with them I actually want you to go and have some rest this week tonight don't go out chill oh, probably that's an old word these days isn't it but you know hey go with it as I said I'm 50 this year so that was part and parcel of it so time sheets, and seeing that nobody's done their time sheet, I'm not going to ask you, but if you was really to do your time sheet, I think it would scare you how much time you spend on that thing called the phone. By the way, my screen time percentage is going further and further and further down. Amen? Anybody had their iPhone tell them how their screen time is going up and up and up? Maybe you need to wonder why, because I lay under at one, it's not reading the Bible. Do you know, it's amazing how Apple News seems to get you really quickly, and then you have to look at everything. Anyway, so this time spent with God has not gone away for me this week. So I want to read a few Bible passages to you, a quick speed through Bible verses. Okay, you ready? Oh, good. Okay, we're all here still. Excellent. Matthew 14, verse 23 says, After sending them home, Jesus went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he, while, uh, he was there alone. Mark uh, 14, 38 states, Keep watch and pray. So that you will not give in to temptation, for the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Luke 6, verse 12 states, 
One day, soon afterwards, Jesus went up onto a mountain to pray, and he prayed to God all night. Isaiah 40, verse 31. You notice I cheated today. I actually decided to tag everything just to make life a little bit quicker. Isaiah 40, verse 31 states, But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength, and they will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. And then verse one, uh, Psalm 1 Verses 1 to 3. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. And then the last one. Mark 4, verses 19 to 20. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. So, Come follow me, says Jesus. When you have friends and family invite you over, do you have friends and family that invite you over for, for, for meals, chat, cup of tea, cup of coffee, yeah? They're actually saying, come. Come to where I'm at. Come, follow me. Come to where I am. You know, do you arrange meetings in Costa Coffee or Starbucks or... Yeah, and it's, it's come, follow me, be where I'm at, come to me. And this is what Jesus says. When he says, come, follow me, he's saying it's an invitation. Come, be where I'm at. And currently, as we know, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. So his come, follow me has a very long-term view. It's like, come and follow me, come and be where I am. And partly, as we've read in those passages, come being where he is right now is actually done in prayer. Spending time with the Lord, meditating with him, spending time in prayer. So the word prayer conjures up for different people a whole array of thoughts. Think about it for a moment, just silently to yourself. Think about when you hear the word pray, what conjures up in your head? Be honest. Some of us get really excited about the idea. Other of us go, Ugh. What's your prayer life like? It's a question for you to think about. What is your prayer life like? Well, I believe that prayer can be put under three categories, and I think this is three categories that God has given for me today. They can come under three. Ritual, habit, relationship. I'll repeat that again. Ritual, and I'll try and pronounce it correctly. Ritual, habit, relationship. Ritual. A ritual or can be classed as fear-driven necessity. Now, I asked you all earlier on about who drives a car. Now, I don't know about you, but there's that moment in life in a car when a little red light comes on in your car. And it goes, ping! And then you finally look at your fuel gauge. And you finally recognize, hmm, my tank has run dry. Now, for those who have, um, uh, who have cars that sort of show you the countdown of how much miles you've got left, you always seem to push it to the last bit, don't you? Our car's got this really irritating thing of getting to 17 miles, and you think, I've got 17 miles left in the tank, I'm doing all right. And then all of a sudden, it goes three lines. It goes blank. That's it telling me, really, you're stretching it now. Now, it could be the way I'm driving, or maybe I'm using a little bit too much acceleration. And 
And it could be trying to tell me, you're going to drain fuel a lot quicker than you thought you were. But we have this ping going on ahead. Now, I would suggest to us that when your car runs out, you sort of pull out, don't you? You go into the petrol station, don't you? Do you pull over as, you, as your tank runs dry? No? Or do you pray over vapours and go, Lord, please condense these, let it go longer? So we pull over to the petrol station and we fill up. Some of us treat prayer with God just like that. It's when we've run dry, the, the little red light goes off in our head, that's when we might spend some time in prayer. Problem is with that is that it's like a petrol station. You have no relationship with the garage pump, do you? Do you notice when you walk up to the, 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 the thing and you unclick your petrol cap and you wouldn't believe I've worked in the car trade for 20 years. I can't even name half the items I'm talking about right now. But, you know, you undo your petrol cap, you pull out the pump, don't you? You stick it in the nozzle. Now, some of you now are a bit more modern and you get out your credit card and you stick it in, in the machine. You're saying, I'm paying at, at the pump. I've seen that. Have you seen that? I get irritated by the person who clearly hasn't got a clue what they're doing and they're sitting there for at least five minutes going, and I'm going, come on, just, just say pray at the kiosk. And go. It'll be quicker. But anyway, some of us go to the kiosk, don't we? But you have no relationship with the pump, do you? Do, do, do you bow down to the pump? No? No, I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm sitting there with a the nozzle going, please stop clicking out. I know you're broken, but please could you just try and keep pumping fuel in there? And you go into the actual to go and pay for the money, don't you? You don't actually have a relationship with the petrol attendant, do you? Other than, hi, pay, goodbye. That's it. That's how we, some of us, treat prayer and treat God. It is a ritual. We only activate it when we run dry. And we literally pop in, do a quick dose up with God, and a quick pop out again. And then that's it until the next time our tank runs dry. Habit. The next thing, it's habit. Smokers. Yeah, I know this is not a holy conversation, but bear with me. Smokers will tell you something. A smoker or an ex-smoker can tell you that mainly smoking is a habit-forming practice that sets the rules for your daily life rather than the desire to actually smoke. Certain key times of the day will send off triggers in your head. Maybe the first cup of coffee in the morning. Do You grab your cup of coffee, you light up a cigarette. You get in the car, maybe. The first thing you do, start the car up, wind down the window, spark a cigarette. You might finish up eating a meal and you spike up afterwards. One before you go to bed at night. You light up because you desperately need it before you go to bed or else you won't sleep. Uh, by the way, just for those, anybody that thinks I'm being quite condemnatory, I am an ex-smoker of 20 years. So I know what I'm talking about at this point. Let's make that very, very clear. And it happens every day. It's habitual. It just becomes part of your process. There's no heart behind it. It just becomes habit. It literally becomes part of your routine on a daily basis. And it's just certain trigger times. And I said it is trigger times. I, I could take you back to the days when you could smoke in your office. I could tell you exactly when I was going to light up. I could tell you the times when they ban then smoking in the... I'm not talking about the office here. I'm talking about my old job. <laughs> it's very clear. Wasn't always a Christian, all right? <sighs> you just, just realised what I was talking, you know, thinking, everything, what, in the office, Pastor? No, not there. I quit way before I went into ministry. Um, and when we when they banned it, and quite rightly so, um, you know, I, I used to I tell you, you know, we were three floors up. Boy, you made sure you made the effort of going downstairs to smoke outside. If the lift was busted, it's amazing. You could still walk down those stairs. Anyway, it becomes habit forming, you knew it. But the only other time you broke your own triggers and had more than your trigger time was when you decided you were stressed. 
and you're clearly having a bad day. I must have a fag. Excuse me for the American terms, what I'm talking about is a cigarette. Now, anybody here that's an ex-smoker or a currently smoker, you know exactly what I'm talking about, and this is really getting to you. You're starting to resonate with this completely. You're having a bad day, you run for that ciggy packet. Prayer life can become just like that. It can become habit, not heart. You'll have trigger times in your day when you pray to the Lord. Note this, you'll pray to the Lord, not hear from the Lord. Bizarrely enough, with a cigarette, do you know once you've smoked, smoked your cigarette, a king size on average takes seven minutes to smoke. Once you've smoked it and stubbed it out, you don't think about the next one until the next trigger time. Prayer life can be just like that. We spend time with the Lord, we've done our moment with him that day, and we don't think about talking to him again until the next trigger time. That's habit. And you might have three or four trigger times in the day when you're going to, I need to pray. But that's habit, not heart. Now, there's nothing wrong in having set times to say, to make sure I'm talking to the Lord, I'm going to do it at these times. There's nothing wrong with that. Hear me very carefully. But what we can tend to do is then make it habit rather than heart. And of course, the only other time that you would pray outside of your trigger prayer times is when you're suddenly feeling you're having a stressful time and all suddenly all life is going really bad for you and you run to the prayer packet. That's habit, not heart. Relationship. Now, have you ever come across someone that the minute you meet them, you just click? Conversation flows. You suddenly realize you have the same sense of humor, good or bad. You enjoy each other's company as it grows over time. You have the same interests. You then turn that sort of relationship, and I'm not talking about being together as in a loving relationship. I'm talking, it can be just friendships, you know, same things. Friendships can be loving as well, by the way. But talking about, you know, you you, you might suddenly just want to text them randomly through the day. Because you just want to connect. You send them stupid emojis just because you want to connect. You might suddenly find ridiculous YouTube clips that you want to send to them just because you want to connect. You start having silly humor moments because you're just connecting. You've connected at a heart level. With me so far? You then sort of always make a point of setting times in your diary when you're going to meet up because you love being together. You'd even sometimes for this friend of yours or whatever, clear your diary so that you can be with them. You might also actually let somebody else down that you've already had in your diary because you'd rather be with them than you would be with them. Ever done that? Don't admit to it now. And then you also sometimes spend time with them, not just laughing, but also to pour out your deepest heartfelt thoughts, your deepest troubles. You spend time together pouring that out upon each other. That's connecting. That's a relationship. And you don't care what time of day it is. You don't care what's going on. That's what you're going to do. Got friends like that? Yeah? Got relationships like that of any nature whatsoever? When you just will send them a random WhatsApp message. And I'm not talking the one where you're, 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 you're counted in with about 30 other people. Well, that relationship, actually no, go back to that. And if you ever introduce your friend or partner with somebody else that they've never met before, you're always proud to say, and this is so-and-so, and they are my, put your own definition in, and you're proud 
how to acknowledge that this person, I know this person, and this person loves me. And you like to tell stories about the things that you've done together and the silly comments that you've had. Yes? Am I the only one? No? Okay, good. See, and it's a relationship that's dynamic, it's fun, it's deep, and it's joy-filling. That's what prayer should be. It's actually a relationship. Prayer is not a ritual. It is not just habit. It is actually a relationship through the day and the night. It's a desire to want to spend time speaking to God and listening to him. And it could take place in a quickie chat as you're walking along. Ever had a quickie chat with the Lord as you're walking along? Ever heard him having a quickie chat with you as you're walking along? It's good, isn't it? I love it. I have those real moments. I'm like, you want me to do what? Yeah, do you want to go down here? Why? You'll find out. And then you walk down and you get either bump into somebody you know and you say, oh, thanks, Lord. That was lovely. Or you might see something in nature and you think, wow, that's amazing. Anybody ever turned off their sat-nav and decided I'm just going to drive wherever I want to, wherever God's leading me? Yeah? Isn't it fun? After a while, then, you suddenly go, I really need to know where I'm going now. Where am I? Sometimes I've had the better journeys because I've seen scenery and I've enjoyed it. A quickie chat with God. There's nothing wrong with that. Walking, driving, working. There's other times that sometimes we do actually need to book time in with God because we actually need to spend some serious time with him, having a serious conversation, a serious relationship with him. I'm married. My wonderful wife is over there. If we've got to have a serious conversation about something, we book time in. Normally, we can have a quickie chat, send each other silly emojis, Actually, I just realized how much I just referred to our whole relationship there. That was good, wasn't it? We don't send silly YouTube clips. Um, but we would do that. We'd have quick, rapid conversations. You know, like, like I'd be asking the question, what's for dinner tonight? What I'm actually saying is, what are you cooking? Because I won't be. I normally get a text back saying, I will be back later from work, so you can do the chicken Kievs. Okay, I see the you bit. Okay, I better do the chicken Kievs. Yes, my cooking is simple. Stick oven on gas nine, wait 35 minutes, open door, stick tray in, close door, set timer, come back later on. Ah, it's cooked. Thank you very much. My wife, on the other hand, let's make something glorious. But if we need to spend quality time together because we've got some serious conversation, we set the time. We set time to do it. And we set time apart away from any other distraction to do it. Why? Because it's the depth of relationship. It only develops when we spend quality time together. The same goes with God. Prayer is about spending quality time with him. It's actually done because you want to do it from here. You want to chat to him. You want to hear from him. The quickie pull into the petrol station, I need to quickly fill up and go away again, respectfully, is not enough. The habitual prayer, which is almost, I've said the Lord's Prayer this morning, I'm sorted with God, is nowhere near enough. That is not a relationship. If I literally just said to to Joy, morning darling, I love you, bye, and walked out the door, and then came back later on in the evening, I'm home, and there's like a two-second delay, and then I get, yeah, hi, hi, and then we don't talk after that. It's not much of a relationship. It's the same with our Lord. He loves the relationship. He loves spending time with you. He loves it when you spend time with him. And do you know something? Like you would do with your friend to say, oh, I do what I said. This is my wife. I am pleased she's my wife. Or this is my friend. I am pleased they are my friend. I am proud that they are my friend. It means they like me. 
which has got to be a really strange thing for them. But they like me. They love me. They want to be with me. That's why I'm with them. And I love them because I want to be with them. God does the same. He goes, this is my child and I love them. And I'm proud that they are my child. God is actually proud of you. He made you in the first place. It's the relationship that he wants. So when the thinking of prayer conjures up in your head, it is so much more than just the Lord's Prayer or just a quick two seconds with him and then get on with the rest of your day. It's actually more than just when you've got an emergency, I must now pray to God. Sorry, I've just seen some of you smirk at that point. That, just, that resonates. God is more than just the emergency call, by the way. He's a relational God who enjoys listening to you and enjoys you listening to him. When, when it said that God so loved the world and the word love is in there, that's him. It's love. He loves being with you. So, this morning, maybe you want to consider thinking actually yeah what is my prayer life like is it a ritual that I go through that maybe maybe you've learned over the years do I only run to God when my tank is dry is it habit forming there's no actual heart behind it I do it maybe because you've learned since you were a child and you've, you've missed the whole point of why we pray, why we spend time with the Lord. Maybe today is a day that you say, actually, I want to make it considerably more relational than how it is now. You don't have to talk to God. You can just sit there and he'll talk to you. The difference is you're taking time out to hear him. Normally the first thing he tends to say to you is, I love you. Don't about you, I quite enjoy listening to somebody tell me that they love me. And if it's the Lord of the universe going, I love you, that's a pretty good start to my day and my afternoon and my evenings and anything else in between. So what we're going to do right now is spend some time listening to God for ourselves. We're going to put on some soaking music to help. By the way, I find soaking music really works. It um, cuts out all the other noise. So if you've got your mobile phone in your hand, can I, can I suggest you put it down, face down, out of the way for a minute. Don't be distracted. And... Talk to God for yourself just for a moment. Let's spend a good five minutes with this. Sometimes you have to clear the junk out of your head. You know, you have to clear the noise out. So let's do that now. And then we'll spend time with God. We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.